It's a real privilege to be back in front of this subcommittee, and I really look forward to working with all of you old and new members. Um, I'm very grateful for this subcommittee's abiding support uh, for the administration's efforts to take advantage of the opportunities we see in the Western Hemisphere. U.S. relations with our neighbors are on a positive trajectory. We have fulfilled President Obama's commitment at the 2009 Summit of the Americas by pursuing constructive, balanced partnerships. We focus on four areas, fostering inclusive economic growth, increasing citizen security, promoting clean energy, and strengthening democracy. In the past 15 years, 56 million households in the region have joined the middle class. Over 40 percent of U.S. exports go to the Western Hemisphere more than any other region of the world. We are working to increase those numbers through trade promotion agreements with Colombia and Panama. Last summer, Canada and Mexico joined the Trans-Pacific Partnership negotiations, which also include Chile and Peru. We hope to conclude these negotiations as quickly as possible. These developments translate into more jobs, better and cheaper goods and services, and rising prosperity on main streets across the United States. However, in some countries, policy reforms are needed to accelerate economic expansion and create greater opportunity to make sure that prosperity is more widely shared. And that is a shorthand way of talking about vulnerable populations such as Afro-descendants, indigenous women, LGBT persons. In order to counter the threat posed by criminal gangs and violence, we have expanded and linked our four citizen security programs, the Merida Initiative, the Central American Regional Security Initiative, the Caribbean Basin Security Initiative, and the Columbia Strategic Development Initiative. Through a whole-of-government approach, we are focusing on institutions and capacity building while encouraging economic development. U.S. assistance has helped create a dramatically improved security situation in Colombia. In Mexico, our partnership with President Peña Nieto's administration is off to a strong start, with both sides committed to addressing crime and violence through durable, long-term cooperation. We're partnering with Colombia and Mexico and others to help Central America address its security challenges. Today I'd like to highlight three particular areas of challenge and opportunity, energy, education, and the defense of democracy. The Western Hemisphere is increasingly a global supplier of energy. Companies and entrepreneurs who never focused on the region are waking up to its enormous potential. At the 2012 Summit of the Americas, the United States and Colombia launched Connect 2022, a hemispheric initiative to provide universal access to affordable electricity within a decade. This complements President Obama's Energy and Climate Partnership of the Americas, in which we and 33 other partners promote efficiency, encourage renewable energy, and support adaptation and mitigation to climate change. Education really underpins all of our goals in the Americas. Expanding educational opportunity is crucial to ensuring all citizens share in the region's prosperity. That's why President Obama launched 100,000 Strong in the Americas, to increase educational exchanges between the United States and Latin America and the Caribbean to 100,000 in each direction each year. To meet that goal, we must double the current flow of students at a time when our own budget constraints our own budget constrains us. So we are partnering with academic and private sector institutions to, to meet that goal. Our commitment to true partnership and shared responsibility calls for an honest reexamination of areas where this hemisphere once led but now falters. In some countries, populist leaders who are impatient with or even disrespectful of democracy's processes are closing down or subjugating independent media and seeking to control courts and legislatures. The leaders of many of today's democracies in the Americas were fighting for these rights not so long ago. We are working through the Organization of American States to protect freedom of expression. We will continue to speak out to defend strong, independent institutions of democracy. In sum, our policy of partnership and shared responsibility has produced real progress. Although positive news stories rarely make the front page, they abound in the Americas, where inclusive economic growth is transforming the region and several of our partners are emerging as real players on the global stage. There is, of course, a great deal more to do 
to foster the peaceful, prosperous, and democratic hemisphere we all want to see and ensure everyone is part of that prosperity. But I look forward to working with you and other members of this committee to advance U.S. interests in the hemisphere. Thank you very much.